All right, welcome everybody back to another day here at the farm. Although we're actually not at the farm right now. We are at my mom's house. So yeah, uh, so it is a relatively, well, it's not too cold actually. It's not too bad. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, but today what we're going to be doing, we're going to be talking about the Trapper UTV, which is behind me right there. It starts right up. So, if you remember on my main channel, I did a video, um, what would I say, about um, a couple months back, five, six, seven months back, I don't remember really when I got this thing, but I made a full video talking about it and when I got it. And today, what we're going to be doing, we are going to be, um, kind of having a second look at it and seeing how well it has held up throughout this uh, half year about of using it so yeah so let's talk about that how well has this thing hold up held up so this thing um, it has held up well it has definitely held up um, it's a very nice thing to drive and Another thing which I was kind of worried about um, before was how is this going to start during the winter but this thing is a very good vehicle to start during winter like you don't need to you just need to um, turn the power on and then keep it like that for a few seconds and then hold on this way here you just need to keep it like this for a few seconds and then it starts right up pretty cool not gonna keep it on here because there's neighbors around and I don't want to keep a car running for no reason so yeah but it starts up very easily and the cool thing you don't actually have to have your foot on the brake when you start it some of these you actually have to have the, have your foot on the brake in this one you don't need to um, although even though how I started it without the brake engaged um, I would still recommend you start it uh, with the with having your foot on the brake that's how I how i usually start it anyway but if you're wondering if you can start this without your foot on the brake you can bob not recommended um otherwise than that like interior and detail wise stuff was held up so um but which i've seen a lot happen with especially leather stuff around the seams right here or around where uh, the stitch marks kind of end that's where it likes to fail but as you can see here, you can see that it hasn't failed. So it's very well made, the interior on this and all the other details on it. The only thing which I can think of which hasn't held up uh, would probably be the stickers on the outside. So let's go and have a look at those. Here you can see the stickers. Um, so you can see one here which says Trapper and then one which says uh, 550. Uh, cubic engine UTV and stuff like that so on this side it's pretty good but if you look on the other side of this um, I wasn't able to get an angle from there unfortunately you can see that this has completely started to rip up and, uh, and as a matter of fact on this one this sticker is also starting to go I don't get it why they decided to put on stickers onto this because it would make more sense of course to actually put on a uh, real it would make more sense to actually put on uh, print that on to there instead of putting stickers in my opinion uh, but that's pretty normal with these things i've never i have seen this before done like this like i believe polaris does it like this but in my opinion if i was designing this i would not make those stickers those would be printed uh onto there this is not a normal car suspension uh some contrary to some people who don't own these the suspension on these isn't similar to what a car suspension is this is a very strong suspension and um, that is because these are designed to go off-road so really you can go off any bump or dent that you find on the road and this will hold up definitely you want to be careful with those because you never know you never I have gone gone over a bunch of different bumps and dents which uh, genuinely generally you wouldn't want to go over to a normal car and this has held up like here's really good suspension the tires are still the same 
factory tires. Some people like to change these into uh, asphalt tires, but I opted to go with these. These are better because I do drive uh, on rough terrain sometimes when I go to my dad's house because, of course, he lives on the farm. It's really good to have this sort of these sort of tires on there, and it's not too bad on asphalt either, so it's good. Just to emphasize this again, this is a Trepper UTV, uh, 0.5 liter or 550 cubic engine, one cylinder. So it's a relatively small engine in this, but for uh, for a vehicle size like this and the weight of this, which is about uh, 5, 500 kilograms, I believe, it is it is more than enough to carry this thing and it has more than enough uh, horsepower for the weight of this it has more than enough uh torque and it's just a really good vehicle i have never um but i've been driving this all winter long and i've never gotten stuck with this um it has always been able to drag it out from any ditch or whatever not that i've driven this much into ditches but um it still can get through a lot of things so yeah it so pretty much it has held up relatively well the engine has held up well oh actually there was one thing which happened the power steering went on this so i believe that was about four months into me using this and uh just when i was i was driving to my dad's house and in the middle of driving the power steering just broke on it and it was very stiff to drive i still drove it over there it was fine i was able to drive it no problem um um well i mean of course it was more heavier and stuff like that but i was able to steer it very well um but yeah the power steering went on this and uh we got it fixed thankfully but the people who fixed it told us that these specific these trepper utvs that's a very like norm that, that's a very normal thing for these to happen apparently so um that's something if you buy this that's something which you probably should look out for and also if you don't know anything about um atvs or utvs if you're gonna use it on a daily drive basis and you still uh service it these have very uh these have very low kilometers between the services i believe um it has about 1500 kilometers per every service so it is not a whole lot um so if you're gonna use this as a as a daily driver and still service it, um, then just bear that in mind because you're gonna be spending a lot of money servicing this. Uh, but if you take it off off uh, Takut and whatever, um, then it should be fine. You should be able to drive it. If you're gonna service it yourself and you're not gonna you're not planning on selling it, then that should be fine. That should be more than fine. But we are servicing this uh, every time that it needs service because that's gonna make us get more money out of this once we sell it eventually because of, of course i'm not gonna keep this for my whole life i'm gonna sell this and then i'm gonna buy an actual truck at when i get a full driver's license and i will be making a video of when i get that truck so yeah anyway let's go to the back and look at the truck bed and stuff like that and then we'll wrap this thing up so the truck bed oh the truck bed um it has been great. It's really good. Um, of course, it is not ideal if you're just going to use it as a normal daily driver because of, it doesn't have a roof or anything on it. I was trying to look for um, adapters to this to actually get a roof onto this, but I wasn't able to find any. Um, you've seen it with a lot of, a lot of actual trucks which have um, truck beds on them. So you actually have that, that sort of hood over it. So I was looking for a couple of those for these, but those didn't exist, unfortunately. Uh, but it has been great uh, whenever we have had to haul some trash or haul whatnot, haul some tools from one place of the farm to another. This has been really great. And of course, I you saw the video when I fixed this lockbox. I installed a lockbox onto this. Um, and in there, I just keep a bunch of tools and stuff like that. I keep stuff if I get stranded somewhere um, or a tire deflates or something like that and I need to switch tires or if I get a puncture puncture in one of my tires I can change the tires if somebody has a spare tire who stops by and other stuff if say my one of my rear rear view mirrors break then I can replace those as or I can reattach them with what I have in the back of the truck um, so yeah that's why that's what i have in the lockbox the problem with the lockbox though is 
this is not designed to hold up to rough weather because because it kind of has that a bit of give on the door which means all rainwater get into this which sucks so um, i can't keep any clothes in there or something like that some stuff like that and any tools i keep in there if they're not uh if they're not uh rust proof they're gonna rust so that's just um the sort of but I need to accept that, unfortunately, and I only keep tools in there. Um, replace, like, I only keep cheap tools in there, which I can afford to replace and stuff like that. But otherwise than that, the truck bed has been good. And here you can actually see the other sticker. You can see how this one has the leaves. Not good. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's everything that I can really think of talking about this truck. So yeah, it's, it has held up well. I really enjoyed it. And I'm still going to drive it for about another half a year until I eventually sell it and then actually buy a proper uh, truck once I get a driver's license. And I'm still thinking about what truck do I want to get. I'm not going to buy anything very expensive or we're not going to buy anything very expensive because of, well, you're not going to do that for your first car. But tell me what you think I should get. So I kind of have a couple ideas of what I want to get. Um, one of it is a Nissan nissan um 2007 i don't remember the model number but the other one is a Itsu, isutsu uh d max um i've heard a lot of good things about it 2007 or 2006 there's even a 2008 which is in a relatively good price range um both of them i want four doors uh on the truck i really do want four doors although i'm still gonna register it register it as a uh as a work vehicle so i'm gonna remove the back seats on it um but yeah i've heard a lot of good things about the d-max so tell me tell me what should i get should i get the d-max or the nissan but yeah that's pretty much the entire truck so hopefully you all enjoyed this little video if you did leave a like uh if you want to not up to me and i'll see you later gentlemen and ladies goodbye